Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this video on does fundamental analysis work, right? And it's a hot topic amongst retail traders and I'm going to be presenting my case as to why I think you should, um, you know, use fundamental analysis in your trading if you are struggling with technical analysis alone, right? Um, because there are edges beyond a price chart, um, you know, that beyond what you can see with your with your eyes that everyone else is seeing, and um, it comes through fundamental analysis. And uh, there is a free course, which and the link is in the description box below, where I set out fundamental analysis. And fundamental analysis can get quite in depth, but. Um, I've basically broken it down into, um, you know, um, a course where it's easy to understand and it will give you um, an extra edge when trading the Forex markets as we need all the edges we can get our hands on when trying to make money within the markets consistently. So that's fundamental analysis work. What I'm going to be going over in this presentation is what is fundamental analysis and why should you use fundamental analysis why does price sometimes react opposite uh, or negative to news data, right? Um, or opposite, sorry, to, posit to positive or negative news data? What is risk sentiment and examples of fundamental and risk sentiment trades? So first question is, what is fundamental analysis and why should you use fundamental analysis? And fundamental analysis is really just a study of, you know, macroeconomics, um, the effect of macroeconomics, business cycle and monetary policy um, of a country and um, the currency strength and weakness is determined on a country's economic health and monetary policies, right? So basically, the better a country is doing, the more investment will go into that country and the stronger a currency should gain right or be and the weaker a uh currency or sorry a country is as far as um you know let's say for example it goes into a recession right a country is, is, is in a recession in a business cycle um then the less investment and the weaker that currency is going to be and also is based on inflation and central bank monetary policy like interest rates, right? So it might sound a bit complex at the moment, but believe me, um, if you, you know, uh, watch the free course, I try to break it down in as simple terms as possible so that you can understand, right? Now, the point in doing your fundamental analysis is to derive value, right? Like I said before, if one country is doing really well and business is flowing into that country and money's flowing into that country, then the chances of that currency becoming strong are greatly improved over a country who is not doing so well, right? So what we're doing at the end of the day is we're trading strong currencies. We're trying to buy strong currency and not buy weak currencies, right? So we're trying to identify value in the market and what is a bargain potentially and what cut and uh, and identifying potential future currency strength right and this gives us our directional bias when looking at a price chart it makes your life so much easier when you know which currency to buy or which currency to sell right you, you don't you're not flicking through you know 27 28 different charts um looking just at support and resistance and trying to understand where the trend is, right? You know which one you should be buying and which currency you should be buying before you even look at a price chart and eliminate a lot of the currency pairs that you shouldn't be buying or as not so clear when it comes to strength and weakness, depending on obviously your technical strategy, right? So you are eliminating the guesswork and I put intuition um, from um, just looking solely at a, you know, technical analysis price charts. And what a price chart is really used for is just to identify where price is, right, and time our technical analysis entries. So let's say, for example, you know, we want to be a buyer of the pound over the dollar, right? 
and we've done our analysis and we think the pound is doing excellent and the US dollar isn't doing so great, right? Then we look to a price chart to see where price is, right? Now, if we feel, if we look and we see that price is coming down for various reasons, right? Um, markets don't go up and you know up forever, right? Um, on the pound dollar chart, and we think that price is down here, and we think that it's undervalued, and we think there's a bargain down here, then this is where we want to be a buyer, right? Now, if we're looking at a price chart, sorry about that, and let's say for example, prices are all the way up here, do we want to be a buyer of the pound at highs? You know, buy high, sell low? No, thank you. What we'll be looking at is potentially a pullback before looking to get long. So this is all we're trying to do when it comes to looking at price charts. We're looking where price is. This is price, this is obviously time, right? After we've done our fundamental analysis and seeing where we can get you know, a bargain. And there are various reasons which I'm gonna go into as to why prices will be at bargain values even if fundamentally we know that the currency that we want to be buying is should be the stronger currency, right? So there are opportunities, they don't happen every day, but there are opportunities in the market to buy at bargain values, right? So why does price sometimes react opposite to positive or negative news data is a you know a big question and the reason why traders tend to dismiss fundamental analysis because their uh, i suppose their education to fundamental analysis is looking at something you know a news aggregate site like forex factory and looking at some news data that was supposed to be positive um, or predicted to be positive so you have maybe the the predicted uh, the past price previous price which was maybe two and then the predicted price might be for example four and then you have um, the actual come out and then let's say for example the actual is one right so they're like sell 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 it's lower than expected but then price still goes up and you could say the same thing you know for um, you know the opposite direction now why does this sometimes happen. And first of all, one of the reasons is, for example, the zero sum game. The Forex is a zero sum game. So for someone to win, someone else has to lose. News trading maybe 20 years ago, um, you know, and trading like that would have, you know, maybe worked and people made their money 30 years ago, etc. Right. Nowadays, when with the retail market, you know, brokers, everyone's got access to an internet connection, well, most people do in the Western world. Um, if trading was as simple as buying and selling on good, you know, positive or negative news, everybody would be, um, you know, pretty much millionaires um, overnight, right? But that isn't the case because the markets are a zero sum game. For someone to win, someone else has to lose. And there are very smart people, right, um, who you are trading against, right, who are trying to take your money right so with that being said you have to understand that the market right as much as there are there are moments in time where you know there are um you know positive news and the market does go up right there are also moments in time where that doesn't happen and this is where the zero sum game is taking effect in the market doesn't mean that fundamentals don't work it just means that the zero sum game is in effect and what you'll tend what tends to happen is you know you'll get what is called you know whipsawing if you've ever tried to trade news within the first you know 5 10 15 even you know half an hour what you'll get is positive news you know the market will uh, go the opposite direction right take a lot of stops out etc before going on its direction Right, or it would do something like this: go down, then up, and then down, 
and then it will just drift for a little bit and then before carrying on or what it might do is it might go up drawing traders in to buying if it's positive news and then go immediately against them right taking out their stop losses and without getting into it too deep but your stop losses um meaning that if you, if you lose then someone else is winning right so the market is definitely manipulated right before going in its original direction and how many of us watching this know this to be the absolute truth so the zero sum game is always in effect we don't know when um you know but it's you know when it's taking place but it always is in the background another thing is you have to look at the bigger picture so from an independent you know news release um you know traders will just solely focus on one data release so whatever that data release is right let's say for example it was non-farm payrolls right and the non-farm payrolls was supposed to be you know 200k let's say right um you know, number and it comes out at maybe you know 180 let's say right 180k employment right now traders will say all right it's below expectations let's sell now let's say for example everything else that makes up the economy right from retail sales to um you know to manufacturing right to um you know, manufacturing to um, employment to um, you know everything else right you've got loads of different data points that have come out right and non farms is maybe the only one that is just below expectations if you have so many different data points that have been positive but then you have one that is you know this is all positive but then you have one data point that is potentially negative right this is going to outweigh this so they're solely focused on one data point and you have to focus on really the bigger picture when it comes to you know trading any type of news because one data point alone is not going to you know um uh, uh, I suppose have that detrimental effect on the overall economic health of a country right also as well and staying with this point you have something called you know deviation now when economists are predicting you know what the um, you know the actual um, or predicted price will be against the actual there is some tolerance as deviation within that um you know that that number right so they're going to be you know doing you know uh it, it would be 200 let's say for example they predict 200k jobs they also have a deviation as to what they you know there's a scope as to where they think a tolerance above and beyond that 200k that they're also factoring in right so even though you're getting this number here they could say give or take 20k right and if the release is within that deviation then it's still to be expected right and that's the reason why you may not have the reaction that you expect right but where if it's beyond deviation let's say for example it was like 60k right then what you would uh, be um, looking at is obviously a bit of a reaction because it surprised totally, you know, took the market off, you know, off guard, right? So let's say, for example, this was, you know, the news came out and it was 220K, right? And you're thinking, okay, excellent, bye, 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 right? But the market doesn't do anything, right? You're like, why isn't the market, you know, doing anything is it's 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 above the 200k it's because there is a deviation right that the market expects a range for the market when the data is released for it to be into right now the market will tend to move when it's outside of that deviation and if you want to know how to calculate deviation or how i calculate deviation um that's also in the free fundamental analysis course and that should keep you on the right side of the market and also filter your trades 
um, and increase your chances of a more uh, successful trade, right? And I've got facts versus opinions here. And what I mean by facts versus opinions is if the data is showing that the economy is growing, that interest rate hikes are taking place, and everything is good in the world, then disregard your opinions of what you might think of the political party or the president that is running, you know, the the country, right? If that person or that party is maybe opposed to what you may, you know, your your ideology, um, then it doesn't mean that, you know, you should be opposed to their policies and doesn't mean that, you know, their policies and uh, whether it be monetary or, you know, from, a, from an economic perspective isn't going to work. You have to look at the facts and the data and if, if the facts say that, the economy is growing, everything is okay, or if the facts say that, you know, we're going into a contraction or recession, etc., right, and you're, you know, you're, you're bullish on whoever is, you know, running the country, then you have to really um, not get caught up in your uh, bias or the opinions of others as far as you know, um, and and try to stay away from you know confirmation bias. Anything that kind of confirms what you want to buy, stick to the facts. Stick to the data. If the economy is growing or the economy is shrinking, and the data supports that, stick to that and leave your uh, bias and uh, you know your political um, ideologies and what you think may happen and might happen um, out of it to a certain extent, right? Now, that leads me on nicely to what is risk sentiment. So, risk sentiment is a thing. It's uh, something that um, investors who are, you know, basically investing their money will look at. Now, if you are trading Forex and all you are looking at is Forex pairs, um, you're limiting your um, your your vision, I suppose, to where money is going in certain situations, right? In certain environments, and those environments are what we call risk on and risk off environments, right? So risk on, risk off, which is also known as RORO investing, right? Is where um, well, let me put it this way: risk on is where we have status quo and traders are looking for a return on investment. Basically, everything is fine in the world um, and traders are more looking for a, uh, a higher return and willing to take more gambles with their money, right? So they'll put it in higher yielding assets. So maybe a higher yielding asset in the Forex world would be something that, a, a currency that gives a higher return um, or has a higher interest rate. So let's say, for example, you've got the Australian dollar, right? AUD versus the Japanese yen, right? JPY. And at the moment, let's say, for example, the Australian dollar is giving you, you know, 1.5%, right? Just putting your money or, or, or uh, you know, buying the Australian dollar and the Japanese yen, let's say, for example, for example, is giving you 0%, where are you gonna be putting your money, right? This is what is um, known as um, almost like a carry trade, which is in the course where traders will basically borrow a cheap currency, which has, you know, really low interest rate, um, and uh, they will basically buy a currency that has a higher interest rate and make the money, right, on the difference, they make 1.5% on the difference. Um, so when everything is all good in the world, this is you know what um, will uh, this is what will take place, and there are certain currencies that benefit from risk on environments, right? Which you'll find in, in the course, and there are other currencies that will benefit in a risk off environment, and the risk off environment is when there is uncertainty, uncertainty in the world being things like you know uh, the threat of war, whether it be um, 
you know, uh, a trade war or, you know, an invasion of sorts um, and any maybe political uncertainty where uh, there is a change in potential um, economic policies and the status quo, right? Um, if a new party is elected or it's not as clear that the party that had been um, let's say, for example, they were in charge over an economic boom phase, right? Let's say if a certain party was wherever you are in the world and then all of a sudden, you know, there's elections going on and now it's 50-50. People don't know whether, um, you know, the, uh, the red or the blue party is going to be in power, right? Then there's going to be a lot of uncertainty and... Um, uh, investors are going to basically try to put their money and take their money out of what would be normally your status quo return on investment um, assets and put it in safe haven assets and safe haven asset would be typically something like gold uh, government treasury bonds um, and from a currency perspective uh, one of the safe havens is the Japanese yen right so the yen would strengthen and benefit in a risk off environment something like the australian dollar would benefit in a risk on environment right so you always have to take that into account whenever um you are trading and risk sentiment can be can and it does override fundamental analysis fundamental um data right so this is more of the emotional side the fundamentals are more of the logic side and um, you know the risk sentiment you know is like a counterbalance and counteracts fundamentals but when you know and it can basically drive price yeah let's say for example we have a risk off environment right data supports the fundamental data supports Australian the Australian dollar um, and the Australian economy being better than the Japanese economy but we have, you know, something's worrying in the world and um, uh, investors are having a flight to safety, right? A flight to the Japanese yen, which is driving the currency price down, right? Because the Japanese yen on this AUD JPY pair, what would happen is, is, uh, you know, you see prices, you know, coming down, right? Whereas traders are buying the Japanese yen, but then, if everything gets sorted, and let's say, for example, um, you know, investors start to say, oh, okay, we will risk on again. What do you think is going to happen? Prices, you know, the, the Australian dollar is going to look very undervalued, right, against the Japanese yen when risk on occurs, you know, when it comes back into the market. So risk sentiment can drive prices and it, do, and it does drive prices to where we can buy bargain, you know, currencies that we think are a bargain, right, um, to levels, and then we wait for risk on, you know, sentiment to come back into the market. Um, but sometimes this can take, you know, a while, it can take a couple of weeks, it can even take a couple of months, right? So um, risk sentiment should be looked at and um, you should really start to read the newspapers in a sense right to find out what is going on and the major risk events that are taking place so that you can maybe just reduce your size let's say for example you want to place a trade on the Australian dollar but for example you're worried about the threat of trade wars and what the effect is going to have on the Australian dollar rather than going at normal size you can maybe reduce your size and then when it starts to pick up start to increase your size and add in to trades knowing that you're potentially at the beginning of a trend right because this is going to be value when risk comes back on so let's look at some examples of risk and fundamental trades that have happened over the past few years in 2014 the european central bank engaged in quantitative easing right which basically means they wanted to make their currency cheaper to stimulate inflation right and you can see here drug is case for quantitative easing in europe and the date of that was the 8th of september 2014 right and 
Also in 2014, we had talks of the Federal Reserve edges closer to first interest rate hike, right? Or hot rise since 2008. The Fed believes strong employment and low inflation coupled with falling oil prices allow leeway to hike rate from emergency zero to, to 0.25, right? And this, the date on this was December the Wednesday uh, 17th of December 2014. So let's go and look at a price chart where we can see fundamentally one currency, one central bank and their policy is to weaken the currency. They want to weaken the currency and the uh, opposing central bank, the Federal Reserve for the US is looking to hike interest rates right, and make it stronger. So with the backdrop of that happening, we know that we should be buying the dollar against the euro. And what you can start to see, right, is if we bring up, um, so the uh, article came out, I think it was um, September, right, September 2014, right, this is where the European Central Bank engaged in quantitative easing. This is when it was hitting the news wires, right? So from a fundamental perspective, we just needed to be short because they were actively, and I say they, the European Central Bank were actively engaging in monetary policy to weaken the currency. And in December, it was announced that, or say announced, but there was again, um, talks and rumors that through the economic data that the US dollar were also looking to hike interest rates and strengthen their currency, giving investors a return on their, a higher return on their money, right? So when you start to see one central bank weaken and another one start to strengthen this is the result, right? A trending market, right? Trends form when there's weak versus uh, strong currencies. And this was all, um, you know, predicted and projected through not even looking at a price chart, right? The, the prices do not move because there is a pin bar or there is an engulfing candle. These chart patterns are as a result of fundamental and sentiment as well as the zero sum game taking place within the market it was a no-brainer where was the money made the money was made to the downside purely on fundamentals and sentiment right so all you had to be right from september 2014 to for the foreseeable future, maybe six, seven, eight months into the into the future, right? Is just be a shorter. Get short, get short, get short, get short, follow the trend, ride the trend. However you were, you know, taking profits along the way. The money was made to the downside. It wasn't made because we have a double bottom. It wasn't made because we have a head and shoulders pattern which broke a neckline. That has I wouldn't say it has nothing to do with um, fundamentals, but what I would say is, is that you want to have the fundamental bias behind you. And once you choose the direction, fundamentals don't change in an instant. They can last for a few months, you know, to even, you know, a year or two as things like recessions can last for a year or so. So if a country just enters into something, like a recession, right? Two negative quarters of GDP growth. Then um, they say that the average recession can last for a year or two. So you know that you can be short on that currency for at least, you know, a year. Now, China's economic slowdown is biggest story of 2015. And this was December 27th, 2015, right? And this was um, a story and um, fundamentally where um, China, there was worries that China was slowing down and China is the world's, you know, basically 
biggest trade partner, um, an economic engine, um, one of the biggest economies in the world, if not the biggest. And if China starts to slow down and potentially enter into the contraction phase of an economic cycle, then it affects a lot of their trade partners being the US, Australia, you know, even Britain, etc. Right. So if you look down here, right, it says it took five years for people to become really worried over China's slow motion economic deceleration. The free cut finally hit global markets in August between the 10th of August and August the 25th. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged 11% on fears everyone had misunderestimated China's troubles and their impact on the rest of the world. Right? So if we go to the price charts and we look at, for example, the Euro Yen right from August, as we, if we go back, August 10th to August 25th. So August 10th to August 25th, around this area here, Dow Jones started to plunge and what happens is as well with um, currencies tend to be ten, tend to lag not it's not always but currencies tend to lag uh, the stock market right so if you the stock market starts to react first is usually what happens and then you will have the currencies react I mean they and they can react simultaneously as well but if you ever get situations where the stock market is reacting to a risk event and currencies haven't reacted yet then um, you know you want to uh, potentially get in either long or short um, to the risk on a risk off currency and this is why I say if you're only looking at currencies as um, to buy or sell then you are really looking at a, a very narrow um, it's a very narrow way of looking at trading you should really be keeping your eye on um, a lot of markets for sentiment you know the major markets from from example commodity markets you know uh, bond treasury bond markets um, as well as the stock market and some indices obviously right and also um, the uh the forex market whenever making decisions or whether to buy or sell right when it comes to risk sentiment so we can see china right with an economic slowdown um the japanese yen is a beneficiary of any kind of risk sentiment so you can start to see the effect of risk sentiment coming into the market the um the last example with the euro dollar was more of a fundamental play this is more of the risk sentiment and risk sentiment can last for a while and again going back to the story this was the story of 2015 27th of december right so even if 27th of december by 2016 we were down here and i think it it kind of continued the euro as well from a fundamental perspective wasn't doing great they were obviously aiming to weaken their uh their currency during that time as well right there was Brexit. um sorry grexit happening i think happened during the 20 during 2015 and so there was a lot of uncertainty around you know the euro and uh, the japanese yen really was the currency to buy when it came to risk sentiment and China slowing down and you can see the effect of risk sentiment on the market. Now in 2016 was the year of Brexit for the UK and again in the lead up to Brexit right and even on the vote of Brexit which shocked um, you know, Europe stunned by the UK leave vote. Um, you can see the effect that it had from a sentiment and a fundamental perspective, right, on something, a pair like the euro, uh, sorry, the British pound US dollar, right, where this was Brexit. And then we had Brexit actually come out and stun the market. This is because investors now did not know what Brexit was going to hold. And you can see the move, you know, down. All you needed to do for 20, you know, for the rest of 2016, um, uh, 
right? When is is buy the US dollar over the British pound? You know, why would you be buying even in periods where you had, um, you know, uh, you know, periods of, of pullbacks, right? Where you had, you know, prices were pulling back to to, to levels, right? All you'd be doing is waiting for if you trade support and resistance level levels of you know resistance that's all you needed to do right there was no need to buy again as traders one of the uh one of the pitfalls i suppose of of traders especially new traders don't understand um fundamentals and sentiment is actually having patience in waiting for price to come to you it's not every time just because you see the market going higher that you should be trying to jump in and be involved in certain trades you have to wait for the trade to come to you and it might take a month or two or three but when it does that's when you take your opportunity to get short if you're looking to buy the pound simply on um maybe some profit taking that is occurring within the market or some short term positive sentiment for the pound and again this goes into things like you know short squeezes the market doesn't move down forever um then it's really um, a lower probability trade what you're looking for as a trader is looking for the highest quality trades that you can buy you're looking for bargains and if you're looking for a bargain bargains don't happen every day or even every week right we have to sometimes sit on our hands for you know a week or two or three there are you know opportunities that will present themselves as well right within this if you trade lower time frames there will obviously intraday supply and demand zones some support and resistance etc and opportunities but the play was really always to the downside now, at the end of 2017, the US dollar had raised interest rates again, right? But we had some negative sentiment from the White House and Donald Trump, right? So the Trump administration's weak dollar policy could kill the economic rally, analyst Bove says. Now, what was you know, getting into politics, but what was happening was is that the um, Donald Trump was tr um, came out and said that he would prefer a weak dollar, and he was going to potentially implement certain policies that created a weaker dollar. Which a weak currency isn't always you know bad for an economy. It's usually good for an economy because of um, you know you have uh, exports, and if you can if you have a cheaper currency, it means you can uh, boost it boosts exports. Right, and Trump was saying pretty much that the, or the Trump administration was saying that the um, US dollar was a bit too expensive, and so it caused some negative sentiment towards the dollar so at the beginning of 2018. And this is in the midst of fundamental, um, you know, rate hike, right? So a lot of traders who had traded the end of year, to end of 2017 rate hike, um, were very surprised, right, including myself, um, to see prices, you know, do the opposite, right? This is negative sentiment that was taking place with certain, you know, um, Trump, um, and the market was worried about certain policies that, that the Trump administration were tr going to um, implement. All right, so you start to see um, the effect of the negative sentiment at the beginning of 2018, and we end up going lower. But does that, or did that mean that the um, the dollar was the currency to sell? Potentially, but I'm a fundamental trader, and I think you should be too for now. And this, all this does is that this brings the dollar to areas where we feel, especially with the backdrop of the Federal Reserve being on an interest rate hiking cycle, to levels where we were buying at bargain prices, right? We were buying here around bargain prices. All of 20, you know, 17, or sorry, into 2018, we were buying 
at bargain prices. And if we go forward a bit, what we will see is in, I think it was March, yes, March the 21st. So the Fed lifts rates, signals tougher stance as economy strengthens. And this was happening in March, right? So let's go back to the charts. Same chart, right? So they basically raised rates again in March. You see another, you know, um, well, it's the beginning of March, but you know, you, you see the reaction isn't fantastic, right? There's no, you know, massive move. Does that mean that fundamentals don't work? A lot of traders would have dismissed the fundamentals and said, yep, yeah, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And this is the dollar index. This is just a measure of, you know, dollar strength against the other major currencies. But it didn't mean that we shouldn't be buying the dollar because then you have to compare the dollar and from a fundamental perspective to what other currencies were doing at the time and there were a lot of other currencies that were not in the same boat when i say the same boat they were not looking to raise interest rates and again uh, this is going back to zero sum gain um the market is manipulated right into drawing traders into taking the other side of a buy trade which is a sell trade and this can last for a few weeks if not a month or two and then what happens is you have traders start to realize that down here and prices around here are actually undervalued right with the us really being the only um uh, major economy to start you know to really be hiking rates i think canada was as well started in the midst of doing and, the, and there was talks of the uh british pound also around this time as well but the dollar was as far as the economy was concerned was you know leading the uh the g7 or say g7 but the uh the seven major uh forex currency pairs or currencies and then you started to get the trend right a trending market ranging markets happen when um the value is established this is what you would call uh price acceptance and then when we go into a trending market which is called price discovery this shows you that prices down here were very undervalued right it just took a bit of time for that to work its way into the market but again traders would say that fundamentals don't work right i can bet you that the financial institutions were just basically biding their time buying as much as they could for as long as they could manipulating price knowing that prices were undervalued for the dollar and when they're ready to they will drive prices to where they want to and this is where traders retail traders will then get in after the fact and start buying at the highs it's again literally in i wouldn't say impossible to predict but with technical analysis alone a lot of traders would not see this coming right they would not see that the dollar or sort of seen that the dollar was undervalued down here knowing and waiting and having the patience to see their fundamental you know analysis play out for the uh for the long term and currently in 2018 if you're not aware i guess you should be is that we are in a trade war I say we um i mean you know the us donald trump administration and china are in a bit of a spat um regarding uh say a bit of but they are in a uh, they've entered into a trade war um and tariffs and in this article in the telegraph which is march 22nd 2018 donald trump has announced at least 50 billion in tariffs of china to punish the country for forcefully acquiring u.s intellectual property triggering fears over a new trade war so this is going to be um, um, a fundamental and uh, sentiment play, right? And this was released in March 22nd. There was also um, rumblings of the China 
um, trade wars as early as February the 13th, right? Updated on the 14th. And China's best weapon in a trade war with Trump may backfire. And as it says, as tensions escalate between the US and China, one crop is emerging and talks about the soya beans. So they were talking about tensions escalating between the US and China, right? From as early as February. Now, the chart we're going to look at is the Australian dollar Japanese yen. And the reason why we're going to look at this is because China is. Um, Australia's biggest trade partner, right? Australia is exports the most of their commodities, which is um, coal briquettes and copper um, to China. Now, if China are going through potentially a trade war and, and, and economic problems and they may face a slowdown, then the effect on the Australian dollar is going to be, um, you know, uh, it's going to hit quite hard simply because think about if your best customer, right, no longer is going to spend as much as they used to in the past. What do you, what effect is that going to have on your pocket? So think about the effect it's going to have on the Australian economy, right? And in the same breath, we have with wars, tension, uncertainty. Japanese yen is a beneficiary. So from February the 14th, so rumblings and rumors were going on right about a potential trade war. And you can start to see where prices actually come down. And then we enter into a period of consolidation. When I say come down, I'm talking about the Australian dollar obviously getting weaker. Right? And then we had some consolidation where Traders were unsure of the effect of the potential trade war as the months have gone on, right? But with the backdrop of the trade wars, there were sales, sell, sell, selling opportunities, right? On a risk off environment. There were moments of obviously risk on as well that were taking place right as traders you know one sometimes you had a week where it was risk off another week where it was risk on it's very sometimes it's very challenging but the overall sentiment was pretty much risk off and what you have in a risk off environment is the japanese yen will be a beneficiary of that and you can start to see as well prices continue to fall so again just to reiterate this is you know, price is not moving simply because you see a pin bar against a level of resistance. It's not reacting because you see an engulfing candle against a level of support, right? It's due to fundamental and sentiment and also the zero sum game taking effect um, in the market. And as long as you know and you're, you know, you do your research of where you are supposed to be buying and selling, potentially, right? It will, should keep you on, um, you know, a, a, the, the right side of the market, and it should improve your hit rate when it comes to, um, you know, your trading success. It also gives you confidence in holding trades because if we know that there is a trade war right then we know that we could potentially be holding trades rather than going for maybe a one to one or a two to one we can go for four to ones five to one six to one six to ones if we know that risk is on right let's say for example around here right let's say for example july and this hasn't happened yet to the right of the to the right of july and let's say july the first Donald Trump and you know the Chinese government decide that they've sorted out their differences. What do you think you want to be doing? And prices down here, you want to be a buyer of this currency, right? You want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar because everything's back to normal, the status quo, right? And what do you think would happen to prices? Prices would start to go higher and you're at the beginnings of a trending market right you're at the 
lows of the market. Right? This is why these. I mean, these these um opportunities don't happen every single day or every night, every single week. But when you can get in right and you and the timing is right and you get in and your fundamental bias or your sentiment bias you know is correct and you're in the you know you're, you're buying at value you can have explosive moves and you know all you need is maybe two three of these trades four of these trades in a year right and it will make up your account so if you're still watching this and you are not convinced after watching all the, you know, uh, some examples of fundamentals, sentiment, and um, you're just not convinced and you still think that technicals are the way forward, um, here's a few questions. Why do financial institutions spend money, a lot of money, on research, on news feeds, and terminals, etc.? If all they needed to do was look at a price chart to determine, um, you know, the the directional bias of a currency pair. Then why? Why would they need to do, and why would they spend lots and lots of money every year on, you know, this type of fundamental and sentiment analysis and risk sentiment, etc. Right? What causes? Right, what actually causes the market to trend or range, right, from a technical perspective? Just answer me or answer yourself this question again. I've, I suppose, I've gone over it already, but markets go from a ranging to a trending market, right? So you get a ranging market, right, and this is what is known as. You know, price acceptance between a sorry about this, but a a um, you know an expensive level, and this is deemed obviously expensive because buyers are no longer willing to push prices higher, right? And again, this being a price chart, and obviously buyers deem this to be a bargain. Hence, you can see the market going higher. So between certain price points. Between here and here, if this is obviously price, why? What is the catalyst that pushes prices beyond price acceptance, and what also makes um, a currency trend? There has to be something beyond a price chart. Prices just don't range and trend for no reason. Right for no absolute reason, it's always a reason, and it always comes down to value. The forex market is no different, right? When it comes to um, traders understanding what currency and what exchange rate is undervalued and how to make money, and it goes beyond make it um, uh, looking at a price chart, Japanese price charts. And in fact, if you actually look at a price chart. The banks are actually the ones that create the, um, the 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 reversal or supposed reversal patterns and continuation patterns that you see on a price chart, right? The, the the Japanese candlestick is just a reflection of what price has done. So, someone or something or you know the entities behind price have to obviously create those patterns, right? But if they're creating the patterns, then they're not obviously trading those patterns because they're the ones creating them, right? Whether they're creating them on purpose or whether they, you know, it's just as again as a result of you know they're they're buying and selling activity. That should tell you alone that the reversal engulfing candles and pin bars are not what moves the market. There's something beyond the price chart, right? what the institutions are looking at and the institutions are looking at fundamentals and sentiment they're not basing their their um their decisions off of japanese candlesticks and lastly can you determine value or sentiment from a price chart or indicators um i've answered that partly and the second part of that uh, question i suppose is the indicators part right and what traders will tend to do 
is they will um, you know look at stochastic indicators and the relative strength index indicator as signals that the market is overbought or oversold or you know is um, at uh, value some sort of value um, uh, price right now looking at this British pound US dollar and we're going to one more example of why how and why this this currency actually um, ended up moving so you can see that the really the move down started from April around about April the 16th right so what caused this move here right and prices the pound to get weaker and the dollar to get stronger right so if we go to forex factory what we have is um on april wednesday april the 18th we had cpi come out and cpi was less than forecasted right and cpi which is consumer prices index um in order for the Bank of England to raise interest rates, they needed, you know, at least higher interest, oh, sorry, higher inflation rates, but it was below the forecasted figure. So unexpected dip in UK inflation, unlikely to halt May rate hike, right? That was the news story coming out. So there was a dip in inflation, but it was unlikely so reported by ING. Uh, to get in the way of a May rate hike, right? But a further deceleration of core CPI over the coming months could be proved to be a headache for policymakers later that year, right? So, story come out that it was unlikely to get in the way, right? Again, that's an opinion. Then what happened? If we go back to Forex Factory. Friday 27th preliminary GDP quarter on quarter we had a slowdown in GDP right slowdown in GDP and that had the effect the Bank of England rate high forecast dumped as growth shock proves last straw right so the economist abandoned predictions that the Bank of England would increase rates next month after two weeks of disappointing data and the public doubts of Mark Carney, right? So it all started from here, inflation figures, and as we went to the 27th, right, just before May, now the doubts of a um, an interest rate hike basically in May, right, um, uh, basically dampened the spirits of an interest rate hike. Interest rate hike means that you're going to be, oh, say you're, but the central bank is trying to make the value of the pound increase, right? Stop to 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 uh, to stoke inflation. So traders, what they had to do, and what economists had to do, is reevaluate the value of the pound. Now, now that the British pound were, you know, they were below in, um, inflation targets and inflation and interest rates were no longer going to be hiked, right? So the expectation up here was the value of the pound was that they were raising interest rates. And now they're not raising interest rates in the same breath, right? Same, same breath, the same year, the US were still hiking rates traders around here who were under who understood value right understood that the british pound was way overvalued if you can call it overvalued or the dollar was actually a bargain right which is the way that i like to look at it the dollar was an absolute bargain around here against the british pound especially since fundamentally things had changed, there was no rate hike on the table, inflation was below um, um, what they expected, CPI, and then dollar continued to strengthen. You also have Brexit in the mix as well, right? So negative sentiment also carrying the pound lower and the dollar strengthening. If 
you didn't understand what was going on from a fundamental perspective and you were buying purely off of technical analysis and indicators where you've got divergence, etc. divergence, you've got oversold readings, right? What was happening? You were losing money hand over fist, right? Were there moments where you could have been buying, right? Potentially, right, maybe, but the money was always to the downside, right? This was this went way beyond any technical indicator which just tells you what a mathematical equation of what price has done right in the past but price what price done in the past you know you don't understand if you don't understand what the central bank is doing the policies right then the stochastic is useless the rsi is useless because it doesn't tell you those that type of information right and you were literally just getting hammered and traders i know traders you know i know traders especially on you know you go on youtube and you you know you were seeing uh, levels of you know supposed support right where people were supposed to be buying at right and literally it was just going lower and lower and traders were losing right losing um their money and um knowing this you know beyond the price chart the reasons why you would have been best placed to all you had to do was literally just keep getting short on the pound and this is where the money was made this year so if you want to get access to the free fundamental analysis and risk sentiment forex course it's available the link is in the description box below or you can just go to trading180.com forward slash fundamental and sentiment analysis and if you have any questions you can email me at info at trading 180.com your comments and questions are always welcome and when you click on the description box below if you haven't already right you get access to the course fundamental sentiment analysis playlist why fundamental analysis and i go through um 14 you know videos there's some um some really good information this is what I learned over the years um, from an ex hedge fund trader who taught me how to trade fundamental and sentiment analysis right and here is the course for all the videos as well so free fundamental analysis course click on the link um, and uh, again if you have any questions just uh, email me at info at trading180.com. I'm always interested to hear if it improves your trading. And if you are struggling um, from a technical analysis perspective and um, you go through a course and it does change the way you trade, you have to be a bit patient as well with fundamentals and learning fundamentals and believing in your analysis as well. Um, but once you do get it and you do understand, and it is clear because there are times where um, it isn't clear. Fundamentals are not clear. And if it's not clear, then you can either do one or two things. You can either continue to trade just technicals or you can just sit on your hands until things become clear. And when I mean clear, I mean there is, um, you know, strength and weakness in the market when it comes to one currency being stronger than another remember we have seven major currencies so at some point there is always a uh, you know a currency pair to trade there's always going to be the, uh, the strong currency which is at the moment is the us dollar and then there's always going to be a weak currency which in my opinion is going to be the swiss franc and the japanese yen right so um i know now from here on out until certain something changes from a sentiment perspective or fundamental perspective that I will be a buyer of dollar yen and dollar Swiss pullbacks into areas right pullbacks um, are not I don't I'm not concerned about pullbacks and trying to make money on the way down I'm just concerned with value and that's what you should be concerned with too. and once you get good at understanding and trading value then you can move on to understanding 
and trying to trade sentiment because sentiment is not easy to trade by the way because sentiment can um, um, it can be quite challenging to trade sentiment and I'll speak to anyone um, about that if you know if you email me and uh, we get into that conversation so um, hope you enjoyed the video again please like subscribe share it would be really helpful and uh, hopefully it helps you and other traders to uh, um, increase your profits and become better traders if you are struggling with technical analysis alone so take care and speak soon